Hi, so welcome to my guest today. Um, I'm Michelle Frechette from Century Hosting Today, um, although several people will know me also from GiveWP and from my own, uh, my own podcast, WP Coffee Talk. So I'm all over the place uh, as far as Twitter and WordPress goes. But today we're actually going to talk to Pat Lockley and Phil Barker from Hey Presto Conferences. And I've, I guess in the last month, really become aware of what you guys are doing um, with conferences, and I am 100% intrigued, which is why I asked you to join me today, and we can do, um, get, find out some more information and put it out for the world to kind of consume in a different way. So, so welcome, first of all. Thanks for joining me today. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's good to have you. Thank you so much for being here. So, hey, Presto Conferences. I first, I think you followed me on Twitter, and I followed back, and and as soon, when I follow people back, before I follow people back, I do a little vetting. Um, and so I always go, click over to the profile and click through to any links that are on there. And I was just like, what is this Hey Presto conference thing? And then I discovered it's a WordPress slash classic press uh, conference that takes place entirely on Twitter. And in a year where everybody is a little overwhelmed with video content and and Zoom meetings and things like that, this seems like a brilliant solution to me. So tell me, where did you come up with this idea and how did you kind of get it implemented? Um, well, I, we, we can never claim ownership of the idea. Um, my partner was doing a Twitter conference in ooh, 2018, possibly 2017. And um, there's a long running story um, that, we, that a few of us, uh, myself and Phil included, have been trying to do a WordPress education conference in the UK for about 10 years. I mean, equivalent to WP Campus, if you know WP Campus. Mm -hmm. um, and we had meetings and meetings and we could never quite um, get all our ducks in a row. Uh, apologies if that's too English a cliche, but um, I, I think it roughly We have that one here yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very cliche heavy. So um, sometimes I'll be using a reference that makes no sense. So I'm always slightly nervous. Yeah. And um. I was sitting there, um, uh, I work from home and, and my partner was, 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 was doing a conference presentation from the sofa and I was sitting next to her and all of a sudden uh, the, the metaphorical light bulb appeared above my head um, and um, I went, oh hang on, I don't need to hire a venue, sort out catering, do all this stuff to do a WordPress conference, I can just, just organise it on Twitter. And yeah, so that was, yeah, that was 2018. We, yeah, it must be 2017. So in 2018, we organized the first Press Ed conference, which is a WordPress conference, which happens on Twitter. Um, but that's purely around um, education, pedagogy and research. Um, and then we, um, I was talking to someone about promoting it this year, because unfortunately Press Ed 20 this year, Press Ed Conf 20 this year, happened uh, right at the end of March. So everyone was, properly at the um well for for large parts of um large parts of the world at least not not discounting um and china and so on was was right in the middle of the beginnings of lockdown um but we've always happened roughly around then um and we'd always arranged to happen then and we felt it, it was a tough call whether we keep going because some people will be too busy to do it or we do it because we fundamentally are doing it for this reason so um, yeah, but the, yeah, I should have gone back to where I started. But the idea is very much borrowed from the Public Archaeology Twitter conference, which is where we got the idea from. Um, but they're all um, there's there's only been a handful of Twitter conferences so far. So there's been um, there's an archaeology one, the Humanities Commons did one, the Digital Orientalist did one, and they're all they're all they're all related. There's a kind of a um, a sort of club of us that seem to be doing it quite a lot. And I was talking to somebody about. Um, Press Ed Conf 20 and trying to get some promotion out there for it. And they said, oh, a Twitter conference just on WordPress would be a really great idea. And my brain went, yeah, Twitter conferences on WordPress, that's kind of what I've been doing. And I went, but I've never considered doing it just on WordPress. So I, I, I emailed Phil to say, do you fancy doing it? And um, he said, yes. And uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. That's great. Um, so I was thinking about how... You know, I actually, I was messaging you all before on Twitter to get a little more information. And then I was doing a little more research and figuring out how, like, if I'm going to apply, which I'm still working on that. I have to come up with my, my perfect pitch for you all because I do want to participate. Do it. <laughs> I, do I promise. It <laughs> I promise I will. I just want to perfect it first and figure out what I'm going to talk about. But anyway, so I was thinking about how um, Twitter chats have become a thing now, too. So, like, Bluehost has a Twitter chat, other non uh, WordPressy kind of events have Twitter chats, and 
the idea of a Twitter chat is everybody's answering the same question. So somebody posts a question and everybody responds with a hashtag, et cetera. You're kind of taking that same idea, but instead, say, instead of saying, hey, answer our questions, it's like, tell us about what you're doing that's special in WordPress. Tell us about something that you could help other people understand in WordPress and take it to the next level. So I, I was thinking about how those kind of things kind of work around together and then thinking, well, how do you organize something like this? And then, you know, I asked you all about it, like, oh, there must be a hashtag that we're including uh, for the conference. So my next question becomes, how do people not hijack your hashtag in the middle of a conference? It hasn't really happened yet, not, not to my knowledge. I mean, I'm not anyway. trying to put it out there for people to do it. I'm not suggesting they do that. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes you, you know, towards the end of the day of a conference, you, you start getting um, spammy comments coming in. Uh, and that's true of any a, any sort of event on Twitter or, or any hashtag on Twitter or yeah. You know, very often, face-to-face -face conferences will have a a back channel that's yeah. on Twitter based around the hashtag, uh, and that will get spammed a little bit. Um, all we're doing really, well, what we're doing really, is bringing the the back channel to the forefront. So it's the main event. Um, I quite like to think that some people might get together and actually have a face-to-face -face meeting as their back channel for the Twitter conference awesome. but yeah um, so far we haven't had a problem with people spamming the um, spamming the hashtag and and so when you are you and, and as an organization you'll be retweeting the official um, speakers and so anything else would be conversation around that is that correct then too also we, we encourage engagement with the speakers and around the topics that are raised using the hashtag mm -hmm. because you know a conference isn't just people standing up and presenting a conference is people conferring people talking to each other discussing the ideas that are raised so you know we want genuine use of the hashtag by people who are interested in the conference but anybody who spams it gets blocked <laughs> I, I think from what i've seen on the people that spam as well tend to use multiple hashtags. They don't tend to use just one hashtag and as such in a kind of a signal to noise perception thing, it's quite easy to spot the people that haven't been involved. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, 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 it's relatively easy to take them out. There's no way to stop it. It's Twitter. There's fundamentally no way to stop it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's never really happened. I think on the Twitter conference, um, I think partially because they, they tend to sit within um communities of practice as such and that the unless the spammer is uh, the person who wants to spam is directly involved in that and also it's that it's the negativeness of the spammer it's, it's, it's a choice for them to make on how they want to be perceived in their career and if they want to come up with hashtags which they've done no work for it just isn't a good look for them in, in my mind so they're, they're welcome to, to 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 attempt to hijack but i think it might um might work out worse for them it, it usually does because people who are um, there for the right reasons usually attack those kinds of people through Twitter and say things like, what are you even doing here? So I don't imagine it's going to be an issue for sure. Uh, so what are some of the topics that you imagine or encourage people? Like, I know that there's a list of, top, of potential topics on the website. Uh, and when you think about presenting at a word conference, a word, WordPress camp or WordCamp, WordPress conference, things like that, you envision as a speaker getting up on stage, having a slide deck and walking through things. Presenting in 15 tweets or 15 tweet threads is a little bit different than that. So it takes a little bit of um, adjusting your brain and your mindset as to how you might do that. So what are some ideas that people might consider or at least some, um, some categories that they might think about? Uh, it's, it's, we, we're trying not to be prescriptive, uh, and it's one of the one of the um, interesting problems with organising a Twitter conference, where we're, we're trying to focus on making it um, a potential chance for as many people as possible. And and so we don't want to we don't want to say don't do some stuff, but a lot of people then say, oh, well, what could we do? And it's like, okay, I have to kind of meet these both meet both of these both sides equally. And you know, if someone wants some ideas we're happy to provide them with ideas, but we try not to be too prescriptive. So one of the, one of the great things about some of the submissions we've had so far is we've had um, 
two submissions from uh, the Indian subcontinent, and that's 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 for for Hey Presto, uh, for Hey that's for Hey Presto. For Press Head, we've we've never we've never had submissions in that area, so we're clearly reaching people that we've not submitted to. And one of the issues with coming up with ideas is you're always conscious: is this the idea of a uh, well, me and Phil, well, me and Phil now live, um, you know, or oh, I'd guess about 500 miles apart, but we're both we're both Englishmen. Um, he's hiding out in Scotland. Um, I live right bang smack in the middle of England. Um, and you wonder are these are ideas about what we think about WordPress. We're, we're both we're both um, from a from a university background, from a, a university education um, technology background. So we're, there's always a concern that our ideas would be certain ideas that other people wouldn't necessarily take up. But we're, what we're interested in is encouraging people to share knowledge that they think is worth sharing, something that they've come across. And it's one of those things that you think we're powering 33 to 37 percent of the web the number the numbers going up so you probably have to edit that to change it to 38 by the time um i didn't i didn't i've just i've just updated one site to 5.5 i should have checked to see what the number was now um I'm not there yet, yet either and i'm usually on top of that so <laughs> yeah yeah but it's um it's 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 the knowledge of you know that there's going to be little stories and it's that point at which you know like when you google looking for an answer and you you, you find the one person that had the problem that you did and you're like oh great someone has taken the effort to put that onto a blog post to share to share that with the world and it's that little thing of just these little, really small approaches rather than kind of kind of big um kind of macro kind of approaches that we're, that we're keen on um so be it's anything like so from this from you've just set up your own blog you had an interesting time doing it you you try doing it yourself for the first time this is some of the things that people need, need to look out for you try doing it with Installatron um, you've just set up WooCommerce you found this plugin really useful um, you, you've broke your first Gutenberg block here are some hints here are some things like that you've just taken a plugin from free to say freemium or premium plugins how did you do it what did you learn um, it's, it's anything within the WordPress or classic press kind of things to be honest and something that basically like I said about a light bulb I, I did a I did a Twitter Twitter conference presentation a while back about how we came how we came up with the stuff for these sort of conferences and it's that kind of when you've you've kind of um had your light bulb moment or you've you know you've solved a problem that's been that's been bugging you for years probably well that's awesome I think you know as I was trying to think it through as uh, it occurs to me that really anything that might be helpful to somebody else is the right topic. Just like when you're considering um, a topic for a WordCamp, for example. One of the benefits to this though, is if you're somebody who gets stage fright, there's no such thing here because you're not on video, you're not on a stage, the audience is just other people reading what you're writing. So those people that might not wanna participate by getting up on stage or, or recording their faces somewhere really can, take that fear out of it and participate in a way that they might not in other conferences. Phil, it looks like you were going to say something and I interrupted you. I, no, you didn't interrupt you. Interrupt me. I was going to interrupt you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's important as well to remember that you don't have to be an expert to have something that's interesting to say for other people. Yeah, experts are interested in what are the problems that novices face, right. for example, because, you know, that's what experts want to be able to help with if, if they're in that particular field. So, yeah, we'd encourage anybody who's um, used WordPress and, you know, who, who's done something which they think is interesting um, to, to, to take part. And, and yes, you're absolutely right that um, it's, it's good if, if standing up and presenting in front of a, a large room of people is not your thing, then you know, this is a great way of doing it because you can have everything lined up in advance. Um, you can schedule your treat, tweets in advance, get everything written you know, in, a, in a separate document and copy and paste it in. Or you know, a number of different ways can be used to make sure that you're, you're prepared in advance. Um, and in a way, I, I found when I was presenting, that meant that I could focus more on the responses to the to what I was saying than just making sure that I got what I wanted to say right. Yeah, no, uh, that makes perfect sense. And you could make sure yeah, everything think... spelled correctly before you tweet it as well. Yeah. In theory. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've already covered my spelling this week. I think that's, that's the thing as well, is that is that a lot of it is partially down to down to a fear and one of the things that necessarily looking at some other conferences that are around it's it's, it's big names big famous wordpress people mm -hmm. and um looking at kind of encouraging people who perhaps would, would think oh this isn't worth presenting at a word camp or this isn't worth presenting at a meetup um i've got no problem with talking i can 
Phil can vouch for the fact that I can waffle for hours on any any topic. Um, and I, I did one I did one talk um, uh, a meetup in London, um, and it was it was very much do I think this is worthwhile? And I, I tried to make it as full of as much information as possible. So even if it wasn't necessarily um, I, I could I could perhaps get past the, the notion of whether it was um, worth someone worth someone watching by the fact that at least I presented people with a lot of useful information. Um, but uh, but one of the other benefits of of the Twitter conference is um, whereas you're guaranteed, I would hope to get a polite round of applause um, regardless if you present at a word camp or a a, um, a meetup group um, on Twitter, you have the retweets and the like buttons, so you've got um, you've got guaranteed feedback, and, and people are normally very polite and very encouraging. And, and again, going back to you know kind of fear, um, we've always had um, a really good um, mix in terms of people presenting at the Twitter conferences. It's normally much more open. And, and one of the one of the early press ads, someone did their first ever conversation, uh, their first ever conference presentation was 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 a Twitter conference presentation, and that's a great thing to see um, because it, it, it's a, it's a useful thing that's and like I say, it's about getting the knowledge that people have out there onto platform so that knowledge can be shared and everyone can learn from it. So the more we can help to overcome that fear, and, and one of the things that's on the 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 call for submissions is the fact that we've got Twitter guest accounts. So if you don't necessarily use Twitter that much, or you don't particularly want to put this story onto uh, onto your main username or something like that, then we can help facilitate that. We can't claim that Twitter is, you know, everyone knows it's not a perfect place, um, but we can hopefully try and mitigate uh, a few of those problems. I saw that on your site. I thought that was brilliant for people who, uh, like you said, who aren't necessarily on Twitter or who what maybe even need some anonymity behind what they're presenting. The other yeah, thing if, if, if you want to do the everything I got what everything I got wrong presentation, that it might be useful <laughs> to take one of those anonymous accounts. Oh, I got hacked yeah. five times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I market myself as um, as a web designer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 one of your ideas. Do the worst mistake you've ever made in WordPress. Like just the, the the like when you spend four hours looking at your code and it's because you've you've done one equals rather than two or something like that. You just there, but I've just lost I've just lost an afternoon of my life. I had one recently where I had a massive problem because I just put I'd got one variable called without one variable called with, and I'd just written with twice rather than without, and it was just that was that was three hours of just you know you're looking at your code and you can't see it anymore because you've been staring at it forever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'd be that. We should listen to that as a theme. What's the worst thing you've ever done? What's your worst, most <laughs> shameful blog? You should listen blog. to my podcast. That is one of the questions I ask every guest: is what's the biggest mistake you've ever made in WordPress, and what did you learn from it? So there's yeah. a lot of good answers in there. <laughs> the 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 last thing I wanted to ask about, and then of course anything that you want to add as well, is that um, a Twitter conference is basically 100% accessible, or at least it can be, right? So. Twitter itself is accessible. In the last, I think it was in the last year, they added alt um, alt text for images and even for GIFs. And so, or as some people say GIFs, but I think they're wrong when they say it that way. Um, <laughs> and so if you are presenting, there's a lot of things you can do to make sure that anybody using a screen reader, anybody who's using assistive devices on the web can not only read your tweets, but also um, any images or any slides that you might have presented as an image as well to make sure that you're taking full advantage of all those things. And then the last thing I would add is that you're using camel case in your hashtags so that anybody who is using a screen reader, they understand what those, what those hashtags are as well. So, so I think it's brilliant because not only, I'm somebody with mobility issues, I go to a word camp and if I have to walk very far from the, the venue to lunch, then I'm usually sitting there without lunch. And so I'm attending a Twitter conference in my own home. I can make my own sandwich, sit down with a laptop and just and, and consume all of the information. And if I have to take a call or I have to do some work, I can come back to it later and actually watch through it all. It's there forever. Unlike WordCamps where you hope the video worked and it might end up on WordPress TV someday, uh, Twitter's there and it'll stay. So that's something that you can continue to go back to and learn from over time. What else would you add before I let you all go for, t for the day? I know that it's late afternoon for you. It's still morning for me, but um, I, I did want to, and I, and I do have a closing question, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to say anything else that I might have missed. Yeah, we, we do um, um, we do provide, we all, we, we've camel case the hashtag um, since reading some, uh, there's a UK charity called the Royal National Institute for the Blind. They provided some advice for making Twitter more accessible. Um, we do to people who present, we provide them with guidance and we ask them if they use images to put alt tags on images and if 
the system that they use to tweet on because we don't want to be prescriptive. It doesn't allow them to put alt text. Then we, we are naughty and we say, should you wish to then put the uh, description of the picture in the next tweet, you can have bonus tweets. Um, so you can go above 15 tweets should you want to. And like I said before, I don't know if I said before, but someone was presented in English and in uh, Spanish. So they were allowed 30 tweets. So they did it, they did it um, bilingually. Um, so yeah, again, again, but hopefully, um, so far all of the all of the submissions have been in English, although from people whose um, first language could be something else. But um, we're hopeful, we're happy for people to submit that as well, and that's another form of accessibility as well that we should um, we should focus on. Um, uh, yeah, of stuff to add. Well, obviously we're keen to get people to submit. Uh, we're, we're, we're also we're very we're very grateful for you giving us a chance to talk to you as well. Well, I, I hope we are. I can't guarantee that I always speak for Phil. Um, but we're we're loosely aligned in some way. We've spent. He's, he's smiling. I think he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he could just be being polite. He's very polite. Um, yeah, um, and we're keen. And, and and the other thing that we always say, and we've we've mentioned in other threads on Twitter and so on, is that we're keen to be the best conference and the best experience we can be for as many people as we can be. So no feedback is is. Um, is too small. Um, no feedback isn't welcomed. We're we're practicing um, something I heard from the first one the other day: radical listening, trying to listen as intently as we can to as many things as we can. And like just today, um, um, someone had asked about um, potential ideas and how we could give people ideas and what Twitter conference presentations look like. So I spent a little bit of time this morning going through some of the some of the Twitter conference uh, threads and putting those moments up into a big thread on Twitter and then putting those onto the site. So now. When you come to submit, should you choose to submit, you'll see there's links to the contact form where you can get in touch with us. If you've got any queries, you can see um, some ideas that we've come up with for potential sessions, and then you've seen some really successful sessions that people have done at other Twitter conferences. So we're just trying to make it that um, whatever barriers or, or, or structural issues there might be, that we're doing our best to, to, to help remove them or help, um, help facilitate your progress over them. Fantastic. Phil, why don't you yeah. tell the dates what is the date to submit by what's the date of the conference and then hit us up with your your twitter account and your website um yeah the date of the conference is thursday this september the 24th um the deadline for submissions is september the 3rd midnight on september the 3rd we've never said what time zone so I assume yeah. it's midnight your time zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, traditionally, it's, traditionally, it's it's very much midnight on September the third, um, but that basically is changed by me the next morning when I wake up. Um, so in theory, it's probably midnight somewhere like Guam or um, uh, you know, yeah, so somewhere in the, somewhere in the very Western Pacific. Um, in one of the, wait uh, the last the don't wait till the yeah. last of it. Go ahead right. and think about that earlier. <laughs> uh, last, uh, last, in the last Twitter conference we did, someone submitted uh, just as I was turning off the submission page. Um, <laughs> like, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> that is what you call under the wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The website is heyprestoconf.org. You can put a www in front of that or a 2020 in front of that. Okay. You get to slightly different places, but they link together. And the Twitter account is at HeyPrestoConf. Uh, so, I think the only thing to look out is that Presto has got two S's in it. As it yes. should in anything associated with WordPress, of course. Exactly. And, a capital, yes. and a capital P as well, you know. We know we, <laughs> we, know, we, know, <laughs> we know. we know. There was a bot on Twitter, wasn't there, that if you if you type WordPress with a lowercase p, it finds you and shouts at you. I've not seen it for a while, but that might be because I've just, I've just, I'm just hard-coded into saying, uh, typing it properly. Well, I don't want to be shamed at all, so I'm constantly, I actually have it as an A text to make, to correct me if I do it improperly, so. <laughs> And yeah, I was... let, let, let's ask your listeners to um, follow us on Twitter, go to our website. Please, if you find what we're doing interesting, retweet information about us. And um, if English, for example, isn't your first language, we, we'd love to reach the rest of the world. So um, if you want to translate some of our tweets and retweet them, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, much as, uh, much as uh, Phil and I, um, are the organisers? Um, I think we always try and phrase it as we are the current organisers, um, and as such, that we're we're conscious that um, um, 
we're both um you know we're both from a very similar background and we'd like to to get to broaden that approach and see if there are other things that we can do and we're happy to get other people on board should we want to be on board so if you like the idea and would like to help out um with something else that'd be great um we had someone so far has volunteered and translated our our call for submissions into italian um the rest of them were all translate we, all, we paid for translators for the rest of them um but yeah word of mouth networking uh, talking about us spreading our spreading our knowledge and, and spreading what we're trying, trying to do and if you want to join in join in uh, we'd, we'd love to have um as many people as possible do submissions and we like to think that if you've got any queries about that then please do reach out and contact us we do um, we're very keen to help people and to hear from people on in as many ways as possible that's fantastic well i for one will be submitting again i don't know what but um i may tw i may tweet you i may dm you in twitter and see do you think this would be a good topic <laughs> we'll see um and i may just go for it you never know but i'm hoping that lots of other people will do the same and at the very least, if you're if if you don't have an idea and you don't want to present, please follow the the uh, conference on September twenty fourth. Um, a lot of people will be putting lots of time and energy into that, so uh, follow it, like them, like their tweets, retweet their tweets, and uh, share in the event that day. DM people, follow people, meet them online. Let's make it into um, a truly international and fun not only learning event, but networking event as well. So, yeah, exactly, right, did I say right? Okay. <laughs> it, was a, it, it was a lovely description of um, a, a fun international networking and learning event would be a, would be a, um, a, good, a good site description. There you um, go, you, you may yeah. have that. I will give that, thank give you. that to you, of course. <laughs> thank you. Well, Pat and Phil, thank you so much for being here with me today. Appreciate learning all about it. Um, we're going to transcribe this, so it will be available in a few days on the um, on the website for everybody to read with all of those different links and things as well. And certainly we'll be uh, retweeting you and sharing the possibilities for everybody to attend. I appreciate all that you do for the WordPress community and um, really, really very much looking forward to this event. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Michelle, and thanks to everyone that's listened. My pleasure. Okay, well, we'll see you on the 24th.